Yes, it is my first time at Astro Film Festival. It's very um, family-like here. And uh, I really loved the opening performance um, by Reka Kinchas. She's an old friend of mine. We studied together in Berlin and uh, we made also um, several films together. So I was a um, scriptwriter in her film. Shortly before Christmas in 2011, um, there was um, a very sad event, um, the funeral of Václav Havel. And that was the time when we started to discuss that without 89 and without these great people, uh, it would not be possible that we are together. So, and also that this is maybe the most important um, historical event we have been um, part of. So of course we heard a lot about uh, uh, the Second World War, or even the First World War, or other historical events um, um, in the world, but we have not been part of it. So that was something we really experienced very close to our skin. This particular element, um, as a, the story of the um, uh, dead East German um, person uh, at the border, uh, Kurt Werner's uh, story, um, was something I, I knew for a long time. I, I actually planned to make a fiction film about that and I was never thinking about documentary terms because there um, exists a, exists a, a very a little, very small, short documentary about Gundula and her case. But then Anna started to talk about um, how the um, mic, uh, uh, macro-political events um, are influenced by the micro-events of, 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 of uh, human life. And so I, I got reminded on, 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 on this uh, subject matter and on, on, on this particular story. And I, I told the story to Anas. Um, he researched a Czech case and, and a Romanian case, actually, when, when coincidence is influencing history. So that was our, our, our starting point, coincidence is influencing history. And then um, at the beginning, um, he felt that it's maybe not uh, a story for a doc also, and then I started research that I lined up a meeting with Miklos Nemeth because I re-researched the documents uh, in the court uh, um, Werner Schultz and Gundula Schaffiter case and then I, I just uh, discovered some side notes and then I made a conclusion to myself first that um, might be the reason why Miklos Nemeth then went to see uh, Helmut Kohl and uh, might be the reason why he then opened the border anyway. So I knew about the refugee crisis, but I didn't know what was the trigger for, for this particular event uh, of the 11th of se September to open the borders. And then I felt like, okay, let's uh, try to get uh, in touch with Miklos Nemeth and uh, ask him for, for an interview and see what he has to say about this um, time. And then we met him and, and that was, um, we fell in love basically, we all, as uh, Anas and Miklos and I, and we felt that uh, Miklos is a fantastic storyteller, very open-minded uh, people, he's very nice to be around. So it always matters because, you know, you have to spend with this person a couple of years first with the interview and, and you have to be in, in, in touch for a long time and then you have to sit with the footage for, for a very long time so sometimes it's really difficult for me to imagine to make it with someone whom I can't, who I don't like or, or, or someone who is not so sympathetic. So it was, it was, it was a great uh, vibration so uh, we felt that this is um, it's gonna be probably something plus he confirmed uh, my suspicions, suspicion uh, that um, that uh, even if it was not the reason, but yes, it was the trigger to open the border because uh, there was no uh, no one no one died at, at that border for for I don't know 30 years. So the last uh, that cases were in the 60s. So it was horrible. It was horrible to recognize that um, because of. Um, some really unfortunate coincidences and, and some, some orders on, on, on the border soldiers and some uh, chaos and confusion could uh, cause a, um, a death of a human being. And he really felt that that was not in the cards, so um, he didn't want to continue on that. 
and um, so he he went on with, with the opening even it was a very risky decision he knew that he risks a lot for himself and also for the country but he, he thought he will take this risk comes what it comes but I think research is very important no matter if it is fiction or uh, documentary actually I am um, a trained uh, fiction script writer but I always research. I, as a, each film starts uh, with um, a very deep and, and accurate research. We worked with a lot of historians together, um, with Andreas Oplatka and with um, uh, Hans Hermann Hertler in, in Germany, and uh, Oplatka is a Hungarian living in Switzerland, but we also had eight people in Hungary, as a, the, the expert for the Russian connections, um, Magdolna Varad, and, and uh, the, the leader of the Hungarian historical archive. Um, and um, these people are really gold, because they know a lot, and their knowledge is um, it's dry knowledge until someone, like a filmmaker, comes and asks, how was this, how was this? And then, then you put it to a to a way that, that, uh, that normal people also can approach history. I think that's, that's very important to me. When, when, when people watching our film and, and, and say of their words, oh, but it was a great pleasure because it was not boring. Anas worked a lot with Archive in his former films before. And, um, and um, this is actually his method. To, to, to bring, to stage the, the events which happened. And in this particular film, he wanted to go behind closed doors. So his interest of, of a political decision-making process, that was very important to him, that um, the decisions are made um, by these people and no one is there. So how to bring uh, the audience behind these closed doors. That was a, one of the main reasons, you know, that there were no um, records of, of, of this kind of meetings and no one could go to a Politburo meeting in, in the GDR or, or no one could go to a, to a secret meeting of Miklos and his advisors, Miklos Nemeth and his advisors. But um, everybody uh, we interviewed could tell something about this meeting so we knew what was said. And then, of course, we also have been at the places, um, and we also shot in the parliament. So we shot um, at the authentic locations where the meetings happened. And we were very lucky because the, um, this also were the places in many cases where, where these politicians did give interviews. So we used um, the, 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 the broadcasted or sometimes in the case of Eric Honecker, and not broadcasted interviews uh, and lip synced that. And we put um, actors um, into it on, on the other side. So that's how we created this, this universe, which is very authentic in a sense that, okay, it's staged, yes, but it's actually everything it looks like and it uh, sounds like. I think the biggest surprise to me, it was in Bratislava. Because I think we also kind of were insensitive towards these people with the Hungarian and them at the end of the film. They didn't particularly like it. Each country wants to occupy this historical event in 1989. Each country of the former East uh, tries to approve a kind of identity through being the one who uh, turned down the Iron Curtain. And I think it was a collective effort. I think it was not only the effort of the people, how some of the oppositional, former oppositional parties tried to put it into a spotlight. And I also don't think that a particular country could uh, take this glory because Yes, it was very important what Poland did in the 80s for the whole bloc, Eastern Bloc. It was very important that Gorbachev came to the picture. It was even important that some other reform, Russian reform politicians came to the picture. 
It was important that the Hungarian system was not so stiff than the GDR or the Bulgarian ones, that we had a kind of the, the, the happiest, the merriest barrack. That's how Hungary was called in, in, in these times. And uh, yes, we had a lot of um, uh, freedom and this freedom then um, uh, created groups of people, uh, a free thinker, who then uh, in, inside of the party changed something. And so it was a logical step that, in, that, that, that people came to Hungary because Hungary seemed to be more free, seemed to be almost Western. Uh, by the way, Hungary always had the feeling about Yugoslavia, that this is the same situation. So, and all these lead leaders, were, had, they, they were poker players, basically. Uh, even Miklos Neymar, a tiny little bit, I think he also uh, knew that, that this is kind of a dangerous game. And, but I think he got really aware when, when, when Kurt Werner Schulz died, how dangerous the game is in action. And I think all the countries put a little bit into it. And yes, also the East Germans at the end in October, November, or yes, the East German population who really wanted to leave this um, jail of the Eastern Germany, which was a real jail. I was there in the summer of uh, 89 for two months. And it was, it was a strange place. It was a tough place. And um, it, was, it was scary, yes. This system was... Um, it was born to be die. <laughs>